You talked about Me Too. You said something very interesting that Me Too was kind of going to be used as the precursor for a lot of social control, you know, a lot of compliance, you know, this idea that uh, we want, you know, people that are not asking too many questions or are complying. Um, and I'm sure people don't get a little angry with you uh, for that stuff on Twitter. People get a little angry for you. Pagli always brings up the great point that men and women had worked separately uh, for hundreds of years, you know, for all of history. And, like, men and women working together all the time in the proximity they are is a relatively new phenomenon. And some of the things that yeah. come up are, you know, somewhat understandable. Go into the Me Too as a precursor for compliance. I think that's a very interesting concept. Yeah, I mean... Uh yeah, I mean, I guess the trick is that, again, like all of these things are were already made kind of economically unviable. I think like my gloss on, on Me Too is fairly kind of like a cynical and unforgiving. I think like the kind of tiny brain read was that it was a justice movement. The mid brain read was that it was a re revenge movement, which, by the way, the most kind of intelligent, sophisticated advocates of Me Too acknowledged were just getting re revenge on men and they were playing by their rules. Um, the, the, the third tier kind of large brain take was that th this was a labor movement, that it was a changing of the of the guard. They were sweeping out the old guard and replacing it with new blood, uh, i.e. women and minorities. And then, uh, you know, for me, there's like this fourth tier um, that's like Pat, that's like the galaxy brain take that this is kind of a psychologically motivated, it's a psychosexual movement, which I, again, I'm like, doing my greatest hits. I've said this like a million times, but I, women think they're mad at men because they're hostile and aggressive and they're really mad at men because they're uh, ineffectual and indifferent. Right. Because men and women, um, you know, for the same spots in the workplace, men now view women as economic and professional rivals. So there's this like weird kind of psychosexual pulsion there, there is like me too. Does feel very often like a provocation to men right. to take the bait. Which they won't because you know, for for various reasons, they're demoralized and non-productive or whatever. Um, but I think more than that, my biggest fear with me too had nothing to do with sex or gender. It had to do with the fact, like right away, like you know, I, I feel like I clocked it. It had to do with the fact that it was a kind of dry run, a dress rehearsal for the broader erosion of, of due process that we're seeing um, right now across professional spheres, especially like in tech and in media. So, right. you know, people getting fired, dismissed, like canceled, whatever, this, this sort of thing. And I think like it was very, again, I don't know if it was like conscious, but it was very tactical because um, Me Too is uh, appealing for a host of reasons, mainly because you cannot argue with a victim or else you're an uh, unreasonable monster, right? Right. You can't argue with like the, its general slogan of believe women, because if you problematize, if you call into question that slogan, it must mean that you don't believe women. And then what kind of a person are you? I just, I also have a problem with who society claims are victims, you know, I quote tweeted David Hogg today because he's now coming up with a new pillow because the My Pillow guy is, you know, I don't know, alt right. He's making an alt right pillow. So David Hogg's not trying to make a progressive pillow. And I just Wait, don't. Is, yeah, have you sorry, heard about the David Hogg, the Parkland kid? David is, Hogg is one of those crisis actors. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, he is. is. He's, the, he's, he's the mealy mouth. He um, is making a progressive pillow. But here's the thing. I don't think any of these kids are victims. I would have loved to be in a school shooting and survived. I don't know that that's a <laughs> I mean, think about that. To be in a yeah. school shooting and to have survived, are you a victim after? You're a victim during it. But when you come out the other side, are you still a victim? This is the last week of our YouTube channel, Ben. <laughs> Thank God we are in Texas because we <laughs> this will be the last week of our YouTube channel. Um, but that's a great point. You, you can't argue with certain people.